All right, here are some more examples of factoring by grouping. Um, on this one, you'll note that it says the greatest common factor is not 1. So um, I'm just going to quickly look at this, and I notice that 2 is the greatest common factor. We, if I factor that out to begin with, I end up with 4b plus 2 minus 6ab minus 3a. Um, so when I factor that greatest common factor out, the nice thing about that is it makes all the numbers a little bit smaller. And ultimately, I would have to end up factoring that, that out anyway. So it's a good idea to do it at the very beginning. Now I'll go ahead and continue with factoring by grouping. Uh, these two terms, it looks like there's a common factor of 2 that I can factor out. I get 2b plus 1 when I do that. Um, instead of parentheses, I'm actually going to change these to brackets just so I can kind of differentiate between them, especially since I'm doing 2 on the, multiple, on the outsides of multiple things. Um, between these two terms, it looks like 3a is the greatest common factor, and there is a negative in front of the leading term, so I'm actually going to make the uh, greatest common factor a negative 3a. Um, let's see, that means this is 2b, and this would be plus 1. Fortunately, the 2b plus 1 and the 2b plus 1 line up, or they match, rather. So we get 2, there's parentheses, well, 2b plus 1. So that's the common factor that I'm writing out. And then I'm opening up my parentheses, and I'm saying what's left over from this term. There's a 2. And what's left over from this term, minus 3a. So the only thing that I would want to do uh, to finish this up, well, I'm going to get rid of these brackets, because they're actually not doing anything. Uh, 2 times 2b plus 1 times 2 minus 3a. Um, the brackets are saying I have to do this multiplication before I do that multiplication, but the associative property says, yeah, you can just drop them. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, the only thing that's left is this factor right here is in kind of a weird order. It's 2 minus 3a. It's not in standard form. So I would like to switch this around. I'd like it to be negative 3a plus 2, but that would leave a leading coefficient that's negative. So actually, I'd rather have it be negative or uh, 3a minus 2 I'd rather have it be the opposite of 3a minus 2. So this is going to be a negative. I'm going to take that opposite and just move it out way in front. I get 2b plus 1, and then 3a minus 2. So you can actually see when we have a subtraction like this, if you want to switch the order of it, you can. But you have to realize that changes the sign. Changing the sign, uh, well, we have to undo that by having a negative. Uh, you know, it introduces a factor of a negative. So that's I just kick that out in front. So this is where we'd end up here. Um, let's see what would happen if we didn't realize that this was uh, that this had a greatest common factor that's not 1. Uh, if we had 8b plus 4 minus 12ab minus 6a, and we factored this out here, uh, if we did just did factoring by grouping like it is, I would see the greatest common factor here is 4, leaving 2b plus 1. The greatest common factor here is going to be a negative 6a. Again, I'm taking the negative. Uh, leaving a 2b plus 1. So the 2b plus 1 is in common between these, and I get 4 uh, minus 6a. Now this 4 minus 6a is, well, I'm going to go ahead and switch it around the same trick I did as over there. I'm going to make this a negative 2a plus, 2b plus 1 times 6a minus 4. But there is a common factor between the 6 and the 4. And that's, um, when we're factoring stuff, we want to break it down into as small pieces as possible. So not only do I want to take the, the 2 out of there, or sorry, the negative out of there, I also want to take a 2 out of there. So I'm going to factor a 2 out of this, leaving 3a minus 2. And you can see that's exactly the same as what we would have gotten up here. Um, sometimes, it, you know, it's just generally better to start by factoring out the greatest common factor if you notice that there is one. Actually, taking that one step further, this is my leading coefficient, or this is the highest degree term right here, and I'm noticing that it has a negative. Um, if I had started this entire problem by factoring out a negative to make the leading, you know, instead of a negative, instead of positive 2, if I factored out a negative 2, I would have actually saved, my, saved myself a little bit of a heartache there. But um, it's not necessary. I, I did kind of want to intentionally show you a couple of different ways, because you will end up with these problems, and you'll, you'll need to you know, not want to have to start back over from the beginning. You want to keep going from what you've already done.
All right, on this next problem, I wrote this down wrong. It appears this should have been a four. So when we factor this one by grouping, um, these two terms, my greatest common factor is three x squared. And these two terms, well, I guess I should say what's left over, uh, x plus four. From these two terms, my greatest common factor is negative one. Uh, I'm saying it's, well, the greatest common factor between x and four is one. I'm saying it's negative though, because I want this, uh, this leading coefficient is currently negative. I want to factor that negative out. So I end up with x plus four on the inside of the parentheses. The opposite of x divided by negative one is x. Negative four divided by negative one is four. So um, the x plus four and the x plus four match up. So we end up with x plus four. From the first parentheses, we get 3x squared, and from the second parentheses, we get minus 1. Looks like I had made a mistake writing down this, um, this one as well. I'm not sure, I don't know. If you did these, and um, so looking at this example right here, if you had this 3x squared plus 12x, or 3x cubed plus 12x squared minus x minus 24, this is what I originally had written there. If you tried to do factoring by grouping here, you would get 3x squared, x plus 4, um, you do minus, and then x plus 24. The problem with this is that we wouldn't have anywhere to go. There are no common factors between this first term and the second term. So this one, we wouldn't be able to factor using this technique. The same thing happened with this one. Like I said, I must have written these down wrong. I'm noticing they're both 24. I wonder, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. In any case, um, if we factor this in the modified form of what I have here, uh, between these two terms, my greatest common factor is um, uh, 3z squared. And this one, when I factor out a 3z squared, I'm left with a z. And here, when I factor out a 3z squared, I'm left with a 4 between these two terms, my greatest common factor is 9. And when I factor out the 9, I'm left with a z from the first term and a 4 from the second term. And fortunately, you can see I did end up with a z plus 4 in common from both of them. If it doesn't happen where you get the same, you just can't, you just can't continue using this technique. So we get z plus 4, that's the common factor. And we get 3z squared plus 9, that's the leftover from here, and the leftover from here. So that's how this ends up factoring.